What is up, you guys? Jason, my brother. Thank you for driving all the way to the IE to come on the Parables, man. Always, always for you. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Jason Tam Fit in the building. J Tam Fit, we'll go with that. That's what J people call me. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, cool. It's a weird cool. world when people call you by your Instagram name and not your real name. I know, I know. Yeah. I used to have a different Instagram name before it's EJ Cruz, and I'll just be like, bro, I got a name, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no one really knows it. They only know you as probably EJ Cruz. Yeah, they should, man. Yeah. They should. But guys, listen, uh, dude, I got amazing guests here. Me and Jason actually just uh, met this year, and it's been a true honor and privilege. Jason, there was no question I had to have you on here on The Parables. As you know already, I like to bring on amazing guests who really spread a positive influence, positive energy, who could give some insight and just, just have that deep conversation. And hopefully my audience can take away something from it, you know, whatever it could be, and hopefully apply it and become the best version of them. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, dude, I love everything that you're about. Actually, when I was driving um, to my appointment earlier today, I was thinking to myself, dude, Jason, like, uh, you're older than me. I feel like you're like yeah. my big brother in that <laughs> one, we're into fitness. Obviously, I'm not as fit as you. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're, we're, we're business minded. We're, we're about good energy for sure just like we were talking about earlier yes. and then also we we'll, we both have this inner hype beast oh for saying? sure yeah yeah for sure i i, I kind of toned down a little bit looks like you're still, you're still in the game you know what hey saying? stocks messed me up bro i had a pair of shoes ready to come and stocks thing they didn't deliver till later they didn't so deliver i got uh, to come on again and then show you what i got okay cool i'm down with that man so jace so uh just to give a little background about you guys me and jason actually met through uh he's the owner of self-made training facility in west covina that they, they just opened and actually, they just had a grand opening, but yes, I like sir. I like to tell them it. I felt like it's been open for two years. Just the fact that you know all all the trainers you had there and all the people that are, that go there, man, just love the culture. And um, you already know I go there for a reason because of just the people and uh, you know you, of course. Of course, yes. Um, I you. like to. I want to bring you back a little bit before we start about your story. Is um, you know when me and my wife first visited there, and we were waiting for Chris, who was my boxing uh, uh, boxing trainer, by the way. Um, you were the first person to come up to us to greet us and then give us a tour. Oh, and yeah, right absolutely. then and there, I already knew like, okay, this guy's this guy's something special. Right, right, and that kind of goes back to just like I guess um, old school parenting. You know, you, no yeah. one comes into your house and you don't introduce them to your mom. Or if someone walks in, you don't just go like, oh, who is that? You have to know who they are, make them feel comfortable. So when I saw you and your wife came in, you kind of had that like, where am I at? Kind of look. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. automatically, it's just it's just human nature to come up like, hey, how are you doing? You know, especially because ownership, it's mine. So I want to yeah. make sure whoever comes in feels comfortable. So yeah, yeah. But you know, it's funny we talk about that, right? Like that's just kind of like what parenting should be like. Right. You know, you teach that to your kids, but mm -hmm. it's not like that with certain people, especially in like in businesses. Unfortunately, right? it's not. when you yeah. become a business owner like yourself i'm mm -hmm. sure you walk into other business and be like what the fuck is the going first thing on I do. it's yeah. the first thing i do you just start thinking like mm -hmm. you, you automatically think i kind of, kind of like as if like when i look at a car that i like i'm like oh i would do this right away i have like this vision <laughs> yeah. but it's like, like that when you walk into another business right or oh, like yeah. services you're just kind of like Dude, what the heck is how is Especially it why service. is this operating like this right now yeah all the time i mean i i can't turn that off i'll walk into other gyms i walk into other uh, fast food, wherever you walk into someone and you're like, man, no one's welcomed me once or no one said hi or no one's introduced themselves. And I think that's one thing that uh, I don't want to say separates us from most. It actually, it does. It separates us from most big gyms is that we have that family feel, mm -hmm. right? When you walk in, a trainer will say hi to you. A trainer will, you know, ask you who you're looking for trainer wise because we're a 7,000 square foot facility. So mm -hmm. when you walk in, it can be intimidating. Yeah. The gym itself is intimidating. With the uh, like red colors and stuff. Red like color. That. I mean, just a gym in general. So you imagine mm -hmm. someone that's overweight and they see all these fit people and they're like, where do I even go? How do I get started? Yeah. So for me, making sure I communicate that with my trainers that you guys have to be as welcoming as possible because this journey, the fitness journey for some is very scary. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like we don't know everybody's backstory. We have some people that need to lose a hundred pounds and yeah. now walk into a gym. This is guys abbed out of his mind doing shirts off doing push-ups you're like that's intimidating yeah they're getting filmed they're things. getting filmed <laughs> yeah. you know things are going on yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. what's going on so a simple hey how are you doing who are you looking for walk them over to a locker walk them over to a treadmill something as simple as that breaks that ice immediately mm -hmm. you know and helps them feel welcoming and that's where that like self-made family self-made culture comes yeah just from that first interaction you know i, I finally realized today because i did train at the chino hills location this great, morning great, great and facility. i just and i just real you know i i came to a conclusion in my head and i already knew this but it really just put the stamp in it i was just thinking to myself dude corporate gyms is just i it's just not this it definitely i already knew it's not the same but i almost feel like i'm about to cancel my corporate gym memberships dude because like 
just the atmosphere, like you said, the atmosphere, the culture. And I have my own um, fitness journey. And I think I told you this, like I used to be 270 pounds. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's taken me like, I think like eight to 10 years. Like, and I still feel like I'm in the middle of my journey or still in the beginning of my journey. Cause you know, you evolve every right, step, right. you know, mm-hmm. through the phases in your life. But you know, and um, yeah, man, it's just, it's incredible there. And like, I also want to put out there that when I came in there just now too, because I'm a very people person I'm about energy. When I walk into a different, uh, a foreign territory, I like to show like almost like an authority or a presence, like a good authority. I mean, right. like, okay. Oh dang. Okay. This is so-and-so's client. He's a good guy. Oh yeah. Ha- he has a podcast, but you, like I said, taking ownership as the owner came up to me and like, I didn't have to do anything. You, you get what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. that's why I'm, I, what I'm trying to add again is just, dude, uh, I appreciate that. And like, like I said, that's why I fell in love with the facility, the people, the culture. And that's why I trained there. Yeah, you know I know. Drive all the way out to us. We appreciate that. Yeah. Dude. I know Chris appreciates that. Yeah, man. And um, so let, let's talk about, so like I, uh, before the recording too, and I, like I told you, uh, we just so happen to have a few personal trainers that have been on this podcast. And I have to, again, put out there that I find personal trainers to be the most influential, the most inspiring, the most hardworking individuals out there. And uh, obviously before um, owning this franchise location, you have a backstory to it and you've been in the game for quite some time. So let's kind of get to know you a little bit so the audience can get an idea of who you are, kind of uh, where you grew up and then maybe everything, you know, going into high school and how it translated to what you do today. Got you. So um, I grew up in Almonte, California. Um, For me growing up, uh, my mom's from Mexico. My dad's from Hong Kong. So we had that, that immigrant feel. So uh, let's just say nutrition wasn't the biggest thing that my mom worried about when she cooked this food. Yeah. So for me growing up, I was an overweight kid. You know, I was chubbier, like most kids stories. And I think if you, the more you talk to people that are in the fitness industry, yeah. 90% of them were overweight at one time. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And then they found a level working out. So that's kind of like where I was um, in high school, played sports. And that's what kind of elevated me from understanding, okay, I need to get up and start working out. And just like any normal high school kid, I wanted to work out mm-hmm. just so I can look good to get girls. Yeah. I mean, that's where the first part <laughs> I of the love journey, honesty, right? Man. I mean, that's what it really was. Yeah. All, all high school kids aren't working out just, you know, yeah. to perform better in sports. It's also, you know, uh, and it's an attraction thing. So for me, high school was great because of the fact that I, I got, I had a group of friends that we worked out with. Um, a little bit later going into college, I did some college in, in Riverside and that's kind of where I took off into the fitness world, I became a trainer at Valley Total Fitness. Mm-hmm. And that was my first introduction into like a big corporate gym. Mm-hmm. And uh, Around what time, uh, we oh are, God. Uh, how old were you? I wanna say I was 20. 20, okay. I wanna say I was 20. And so it was me and like four guys that lived in an apartment um, going to college and then I got into this training thing and I just I just fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've always loved training myself, but I, training people just became like a, a instant gratification for me. Mm-hmm. to have people that were way older than me just thanking me you know it's like mm-hmm. wow how could me at 20 years old really do anything for you that's 45 own multiple businesses and it was just crazy to see how you change these people's lives mm-hmm. and that's like the first introduction i had to like money isn't everything yeah your health is yeah you know i would train these people that are 40 50 and that's what i aspire to be you know a millionaire like, yeah. like they were and they were telling me man i can't even go to hawaii because i i'm so out of shape i can't even uh do a trail or i can't go parasailing because i'm overweight and i was like man so you have all this money yeah and you can't do anything with it really to an extent right you can't really live your life can't invest in no no yeah, yeah, right yeah. so a lot of them are investing real late in their life into getting fit so that was like my first introduction there um you know what before before we continue sorry yeah. to interrupt i've two things that just came to my head one Growing up, you probably had the two worst cultural diets. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I used to be. I used to ask people, "What did you have? A chow mein burrito?" You know what's funny? Now that I think about it, man, if I would have patented that when I was younger, because now you have like food trucks in LA that have yeah. like the both vibe. Yeah. I would have been rich off of food, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no. we have that, but and you know mm-hmm. what's uh, just just hearing what you're saying. It's probably the most unique upbringing as far as how you got into fitness because you weren't, it's not like you were a football star or like not anything crazy like that. You mm. were just kind of in it, get the girls, I guess you could say, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you just got that first job. Yeah. You know, okay. usually like the, the personal trainers I know, like they've had some sort of, you know, they were into fitness early in their age or maybe like it was influenced by a brother or like a mentor or something. You mm-hmm. just kind of just seemed like you you stumbled upon it almost. No, it seems... I mean, yeah, I guess you could say stumbled upon it, but I mean, obviously my brother wrestled, my brother played sports. I okay. mean, but for him, he wasn't like, oh, you got to eat healthy. You got to do this. It was more when I got into high school and I 
it was funny because I would find myself reading old school Muslim fitness and I would enjoy it more than reading any kind of textbook. Yeah. You know, and I, I was too young to really understand and we didn't push like this age now. It's like, oh, if that's your passion, run with it. I didn't know anything. Yeah. You know, I didn't know like, oh, I can make a career out of this. I just thought, oh, this is what I love to do. I would find myself, you know, just reading books on books on books of just about fitness. Yeah. This is before I was even thinking about being a personal trainer. I was like a junior in high school mm-hmm. and I was like, how can I maximize X, Y, and Z? Mm-hmm. And I was like, if I would put that much of time and attention into school, you know, yeah. but I just did not have a passion for that. Yeah. So for me, it's taking that passion and then turning it into something that, that where I'm at now. But really it was just, um, I think what really helped me was getting into that corporate gym setting and having a mentor at that time that really pointed me in the right direction and helped me grow as a fitness professional, as I like to call it. Mm-hmm. So training wise in Riverside, I did that for Oh, you trained at Riverside Valleys. I trained at Riverside Valleys when it did exist off of Madison. Shout out to anyone that ever went there. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was my home gym, man. It was a piece of crap gym. We had homeless people all over that place. But uh-huh. that's the first time that I had that family feel. So it was like nice. it was like the veteran trainers. They would onboard a lot of the newer trainers, which would be us, and they mm-hmm. would take us under their wing, and they would show us how to train, how to communicate with with your with your clients, you know, how to sell training, how to prescribe training. And it's funny because a lot of them now are like fitness entrepreneurs. Like a lot of them now own wow. their own gyms, or they're uh, one of my good friends, Awana. She's like sixty eight thousand followers, does figure. You know, she she blew up, and she was the first person. I remember to ever take me on the workout floor and just demolish me. And I was like, wow, like, Dang. okay, it doesn't matter how, how big I think I am. There's a whole another aspect of fitness. Cause at that time I just thought, oh, lifting weights was what you had to do and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, Bally's molding some celebrities. Huh? It, it really is. man. <laughs> it's, it's honestly, if, if you talk to a lot of people that are like, even right now that are like either big corporate gym, either district managers, everybody came from that Bally setting because it was, it was, um, it was such a family, family family feel like all of us went out together we all you know would have friendly competition about how many clients we have and i just took that and that's what we have at south made west covina so it's just it's just where i got the first taste of it and understanding that, that culture right the culture and that we all have to work together it doesn't matter if we were all had our own independent training going on if we all work together it just the clients felt that like you yeah right the clients feel when you walk into that gym you feel like oh my god everyone here is here to help me it's not like i signed on with jason so i can only talk to jason yeah. you can talk to anyone in that gym yeah and that's what breeds that culture and that's why i tell people that's why crossfit does so well yeah. You walk into a CrossFit, everybody knows you, you know, it's, it's one thing to get fit, but if you could get fit with people that really care about you, then I mean, that's where you're going to stay. Yeah. I, I feel like anytime, it, whether it's fitness or whatever it may be, and I can't think of the top of my head, but like really just anywhere, any business or any type of place where there's a community, I think if you walk in there and you know, everybody, it's not just like you're going there for one person, right? right? If you could speak and you say, you know, like I go in there, say hi to all the trainers and just everybody like that just gives you like, again, that gives you that emotional attachment. Exactly. You know what I mean? That family feel exactly what we're talking about. And definitely you guys have that there. So, that, man, that's amazing that uh, people from Bally's and that's, that, you know, you got that first taste from there. How what were some of the things that you like probably like the biggest lessons you learned from, you know, starting off over there at Bally's and the corporate gym you know what uh the biggest thing was to take care of the people that work for you okay so my mentor was our fitness manager at the time and he always took care of us and we would go to That's other good. gyms like we would go to so uh bally's had um riverside um san bernardino corona so we would go to these other gyms and talk to some of the other trainers They're like oh man you work for anthony that heard this guy really like mentors you guys our guy doesn't even care he just wants his his, his uh, bonus check and I would notice Anthony would take a lot of time. This was my mentor, Anthony, Anthony yeah. Nichols. Shout out to him if he ever listens to this. Uh, unfortunately, I lost touch with him a little for a little while. But um, he would sit you down and really talk about you and your life. Mm-hmm. Right? It was never numbers. He would be like, Tam, I need to talk to you in the office. Like, what are you doing right now? Dude, are you going to school? You're not going to school. What That's do you good. want to do? Yeah. And when I knew how much he cared about me, I would work. I would stay at that gym till like 11 o'clock trying to get deals for him so he can get his bonus and that's the first time and i saw that for every single trainer his veteran trainers we knew they were his veteran trainers you those people were taken care of and it wasn't like oh you're playing favorites it's like no these people have been with me have helped me develop this team so they're always taken care of i like that and for me i was like okay i get it so my goal was to be a veteran trainer so i can be in that tighter circle yeah you know what i mean and it wasn't like any new trainers were like oh they're getting all the leads because it wasn't like that it was just like they were given a certain amount of respect Mm. That I think most people at that gym knew, oh, that's that's Jason, that's XYZ, they're, they're veteran trainers here. So, you know, they kind of earn that respect from being there so long. Mm. And, and I've learned 
how to take that and really apply it to my trainers. And I call them my trainers, but really they're all independent contractors. Yeah. But for me, I try to find out their why. And it sounds so generic and so you can read a book on it, but it's yeah. really what you're doing this for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Are you a part time student? You just want to, you don't want to work at like a Denny, so you figure you can make money training? That's fine. There's a plan for you. Yeah. Um, you have a mortgage and kids. There's a plan for you. You can do whatever it is that you want to do with yeah. this business. We just got to find out why you're here, why you want to be independent trainer, and how we can get your clients. Yeah. Well, one, you want to know who's, uh, uh, and we spoke about this. It's not like they're working under you or working for you. You guys yeah. are working together. We're all working together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But one, you you want to like get to know them, understand them. But you also want to, as a leader, I would imagine, identify strengths and weaknesses and how you can help them 100%. grow. How you can help them reach those goals that they're yes. trying to reach and stuff like that. Yeah, right? every single trainer, man, you talk to them. Um, some of them have big IGs and I guess you could call that their strength. But then when they try to do like a consultation, they get kind of stuck. And it's like, wow. You have all these people that just follow every word you say on IG, yeah. but when you have them in front of you, and it's a different world that I have to realize is out there. You know, I, I'm in my 30s, so for me, it was always in person. We were handing out business cards. We were doing stuff, so I built that, I guess, that, that strength from repetition of doing it. A lot of these people only interact with other people on IG, mm -hmm. and then they have this huge following, and yeah. now they're this influencer, and now they're like, person's in front of me. What do I tell them? Oh, man. Uh, you know, it, and it's and it's it's a strange thing to see, but at the surprising, same time, right? it's surprising. But at the same way, it's like okay, this is the new culture. This this is kind of what it is. So yeah. you know, I kind of take take a couple steps back with them and, and kind of show them. I let them shadow me doing it, or I'll, I'll interview them in a sense, mm -hmm. so they get an idea of what we're looking for. You yeah. know, how you prescribe. I always say it's prescribing exercise because I always tell people if you go to the doctor, the doctor doesn't go, okay, you need a heart transplant. You have to do tests. You have to do blood work, and then yeah. based off of all of that this is what you need yeah, yeah yeah right so once you do an overhead squat assessment whatever your whatever it is that you do as a trainer you're like this is how many times a week you need this is what program you need this is how we're going to develop you mm -hmm. this is the price i, I like that because what you're what i'm hearing is i mean i've had guests on here right mm -hmm. on, on this podcast and we it, it's just crazy because we always talk about modern practices now and how things are always changing so what you're telling me is basically you identify like hey look okay this person has a big following. Yeah, it may be surprising that they can't interact and do yeah, a consultation uh -huh. or you know one on one, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like you know, this is just how it. Is. This is just what it. What it is. This is reality. But still, let me go in there and let me help them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, allow them to grow and go from there. You know what I mean? And it's just like that's just how it is. Like I, it, it, it's funny because a lot of dinosaur type of practices Dude, still translate those are the to best yeah still still translate yes. into today and it's kind of it doesn't work that way no more you no know it saying? doesn't and i think people stray away from just building relationships and and if you hear i mean even on your podcast you listen to entrepreneur after entrepreneur after successful person the take me gal for instance um building relationships are probably the most important thing Absolutely. and when you have a client that's building a relationship yeah. we we used to call it back in the day going on a date yeah. Right. So you go on a date with the client, you get their information, <laughs> and then the day you're trying to get that kiss. Cool. Yeah. You know, kiss being they sign up and they and they become your client. Yeah. But really, they're putting all their faith in you. Absolutely. And so just like when you build, you know, I'm married, so my wife and our uh, my wife and our relationship, it wasn't just we got married off the bat; it's we had to court each other. Yeah. And once you build that relationship, that's where the end game is: is you build a relationship, you get the client, the client loves you, yeah. is going to bring you more business because they're like, my trainer's the best. I mean, how many times have you referred Chris? You probably yeah. refer Chris to everybody. Yeah. And so I tell people, all you need is one good client. Yeah. All you need is one good, all you need is one good meet and greet. Yeah. I met you and then so I was able to meet some other pretty influential people mm -hmm. that have helped me along the way. You know, I met Miguel um, through a friend. Miguel was actually old school Bally's as well. Mm -hmm. Miguel and Dean, we all were connected through Bally's and it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Interesting. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So Miguel was, I think he was a sales associate or something like that. He was oh. like a sales manager. Dean was a 24 hour fitness, but we all grew up in that culture, oh, yeah. you know, of, of well, you got to actually go out there and build relationships. You can't just be like, Oh, come train with me. It's X amount of X amount of money. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no real value in that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um, I know like Miguel used to stress and by the way, guys, uh, Miguel Aguilar, he was a, a, a past guest on the podcast. If you guys are not familiar with the name, but you know, uh, like he likes to say all the time, you guys are in the service of impacting people's lives, hundred percent, and serving people. But the thing is, what I what I want to highlight here is, you know, there are so many personal trainers out there. There's so, so many, many real estate agents out there. There's so, so many, many, you know, different occupations, so many DJs, I guess. Like, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they're all the same. But 
why do you attach yourself to that one person? Right. And like you said, when it comes to uh, all it takes is that building that relationship mm-hmm. or that, that first impression. Like to me, like there's two things you can't take back. It's first impressions in time. Yes. You know what I mean? So I like that, like exactly what you said of building relationship. I think it's so, so important, especially I would imagine, of course, in your profession. In that profession. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially for the young trainers. Um, I always stress that. I mean, when we have meetings, I, I always tell them you know, building these relationships, cross promote with each other. So when we first opened, they were just all individuals, meaning like, you know, they all had their own little Instagrams and then they started cross promoting. And it was, it was, it was, it's crazy to see how they took it and they ran with it. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're doing videos together and they're understanding how this works, how like, okay, invite people over, shoot some content with them and then put it on IG because IG is a very powerful tool. We didn't have that when we were younger. Yeah. You know, and I I tell some of these trainers, you guys are lucky, man. You guys, first of all, Instagram is free. Yeah. Right. If it would cost a post, I bet you a lot more people would be more put a little bit more time into what they post and 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 how much value is actually in there. Yeah. So a lot of these guys, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, mm-hmm. you have so many tools that you can use as a, as an entrepreneur or even just a trainer to really run with. And I think that's a lot of people aren't utilizing it. Believe it or not, they're really not utilizing it as much as they should. Yeah. Yeah. Besides, um, you know, it's funny. I, I I was asking myself, you know what? There's there's a one question I just wanted. To like really throw you off um and it, it was this i was telling my wife i was like you know what i want to ask him this question and it, it's, it's this if, if you weren't uh and we're gonna go back to your story i promise if you weren't personal training what do you think you'd be doing because again i want to really i really want to highlight who you are you man. know what when i was younger i always wanted to be a teacher interesting i okay. feel like but that's what you're doing now too. Exactly, exactly. I mean, <laughs> I had that discussion with my wife. My wife's like, you know, and people are, oh, you're very, I'm not salesy. If I believe in something, you know what I mean? You're going to yeah. see the passion, the value from it. But I always, lo- I love working with little kids. I love working with these trainers and seeing how they grow. So for me, it's like being a teacher, being a coach, being one of those things I think I would I would have really took to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could definitely see myself as a football coach, a, yeah, uh, a yeah. wrestling coach or something like that because I love to see people grow and it's, it's, it's funny because I get so much satisfaction out of that. Yeah, just teaching, mentoring. just teaching, and then seeing the people that take what I what I give them and they run with it, and then they're so successful. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that's that's the name of the game. You know, you yeah. run off with these tools and be successful, and then we all lift each other up. Yeah, it's funny because um, earlier in my life, I was actually um, I used to be an MC. I used to help my dad because he was a DJ, mm-hmm. and I would you know, I'm a nurse. But then I, I used to hate doing the MC because I don't know these people. Really? Open parties, all stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then here I am now, freaking podcast. I was gonna say I can see you being an MC. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. What, like one more set, one more set, yeah, like, yeah. one more rep, you know. But uh, anyway, so you obviously uh, you, you left Bally's, mm-hmm. right? What, where, where's the next like uh, take in your career? So take a step back. Um, I actually got promoted to be my own district or actually from um, f- uh, fitness manager at a, a rancho gym. So nice. rancho had just opened up and it was a new kid on the block and it was huge and it's still there. It's LA fitness. Mm-hmm. So, um, so LA fitness. LA, okay. Yeah. I mean it, it was, it's LA fitness now, but it okay. was, it was Bally's. But at the time, okay. Okay. at the time, dude, I was, um, I was so young and immature as a trainer. I mean, I did everything wrong as a trainer that, that I preached not to do now. And um, this mentor took me under his wing and he pretty much told me, listen, man, you need some direction. I'm going to have you be my assistant. And at the time I was like, dude, are you sure you want me? Because I don't, I don't really have the respect of a lot of trainers there. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people still look at me as that young little kid that just kind of onboarded. Granted, at that time I had matured a little bit and I understood the business a little bit more. And uh, he took a lot of flack for that. Like, why would you have this guy be your assistant? And everyone was like, oh, he just has Jason in there to do his grunt work, which I did. Mm-hmm. I did his paperwork. I did the payroll. I did everything. And he's like... There's some things in life that you do that aren't for money. Yeah. Right? You're going to learn this. No one else knows this. Yeah. So when your time comes, be ready. And I used to be like, I, I trusted him. And that's the thing. We had such a good relationship. I trusted whatever he told me. So I would stay there, do his payroll. I would stay there. I would do new hire paperwork. I would say that. I did everything. All he did was chill. But when that opportunity opened up, I was the first person that was plugged in there. Yeah. Because so now I'm like 20, 23 years old, maybe 22 making a salary, making a bonus, and one of the biggest clubs in, in um, Southern California at the time. Nice. So it was like, what is this kid doing in this? Like, he doesn't know how to run it. And it's funny because I didn't. But I took what I learned and I just ran with it. You seized see, see the opportunity. I seized the opportunity. Yeah, I yeah. got in there and, and you know, we, we, we made a lot of money being in there. And uh, that's when I first was kind of like understanding how this corporate world works yeah. as far as like firing trainers and, and having to be the the bearer of bad news because one guy wanted to 
do a training seminar in the park, but you couldn't do that because you're in the corporate, you're in the corporate rules, right? You're not allowed to be an individual. You have to be ballet trainer no matter what. Yeah. So I would get trainers in here that had like a boxing background and they would be like, oh, I have a boxing gym that I go to. And I, since you guys don't have anything boxing, I take them over there. I'd have to let them go, mm -hmm. you know? And it was like one of those things that I hated doing that. Yeah. I hated letting it. Letting people go. I made the most amount of money being a fitness director, but I hated every minute of it because I had to be the guy that crushed people's dreams, mm. right? So I had this one kid, um, he would train this lady. She was extremely overweight. Yeah. She didn't have money. He would invite her in, work out with her for free, just put her on a treadmill, and she lost so much weight. Somebody reported him to my higher up, yeah. and all he did was literally walk with her, talk with her. I had to fire him. Wow. And it was like, oh, it was the hardest thing for me because I'm like, this kid is so passionate about fitness. You knew he was, he, his mind, like he had a good yeah, heart. Yeah, he's, not, coming from yeah, a good place. yeah, he's yeah. not trying to like take money from the company and that's what they're always going to, always taking money from the company. I mean, I had to go to court a bunch of times. It, it was just like, man, this is not what I got into fitness for. Yeah. But I learned, I learned a lot from doing that. And so now when I, when I meet trainers and, and they're at corporate right now, I understand exactly what they're going through. Yeah. Cause I've been through every single, I've been the new trainer. I've been a fitness manager. I've been corporate where I had to fire people. So I've kind of matured throughout the company and done yeah. all that. So I, I could speak to any, any, anywhere you are in your fitness world, I could, I could speak to it because yeah. I've done it. Yeah. So from there we got bought up by LA fitness mm -hmm. and LA fitness offered me some BS package <laughs> yeah, that yeah. i was like are you kidding me because alley fitness's model is more uh quantity than quality okay and and i wasn't for that so i became um an independent private trainer in rancho cucamonga okay and that's when i kind of started the the next step of my life as far as like uh training and and it was scary because i'm like okay i had the corporate gym like a lot of trainers have you know their mindset i have these clients walking in how am i gonna get my own clients yeah so luckily for me um facebook was 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 pretty prominent then and I had a pretty good reputation in Rancho so um, a lot of clients followed me you know but from there even at that small little place I learned oh I'm still not really an independent trainer because I'm still working for this gym that I'm at mm -hmm. you know so from even from even from working and being independent in a sense I wasn't really independent because they set prices I had to give them a percentage of everything I made mm -hmm. and um, I think my story isn't so much isn't so much like I was addicted to drugs or you know I I was broke and homeless. I was never any of that. I think my story is more in the sense where a lot of people go through. You're just complacent. Yeah. Right. So I would be same, at this. Same. Yeah. Right. So I was at this gym and I was making great money. Yeah. I mean, everyone has their different ideas, but you know, I, I could comfortably say I was making at least $10,000 a month there. Yeah. You know, just being a trainer, my wife and I were vacationing. We had no really worries in the world, but in the back of my head, I always go, Oh my God, I know I could do more. Like I just knew I could, I yeah, just yeah. knew like all this. All this experience I had, I can take that and run with it and do it. And, you know, so they would hire new trainers in there and I would be the one mentoring them. Yeah. And it's like this owner of this gym, she would just sit back and kind of let me do my thing. And I'm like, man, I just knew there was like a greater calling. And it's weird because a lot of people I talk to, it's not that they're like struggling or they come from a broken family. I think most people's stories is just they're complacent. I got comfortable. Yes. Right. You're comfortable. You're making your little bit of money. You're at Ali Fitness. You're at 24. You clock in. You love your clients. But you know there's more. Yeah. It's funny how just that inner voice speaks to you, to everybody. Oh, that it does. That you want more or you know you're destined for something mm -hmm. better or, you know, uh, there's more for you. Mm -hmm. But we just can't figure that out on how to get there. Right, right. But I almost feel, too, that that's the beauty of it, too. It's mm -hmm. just that it's that perspective shift that we have to kind of go through in order to do that. And, you know, I want to highlight a few things because I really think this highlights who you are as a person and, you know, as a businessman was uh, when you talked about you had to unfortunately fire that trainer. Un you know, it was very unfortunate. It made you sad, you know, because, you know, he was a good kid. Yeah, from a good heart, kid. But at the same time, you would really be doing him a disservice if he didn't get fired. Because technically, you know, this is, we're talking about reality corporate job. Yes. You know what I mean? Not basically, kind of not following the rules, basically. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And another thing I, I think that you brought up that I think is very, very important is that the fact that, you know, sometimes from the outside perspective, you know, people were saying like, hey, oh, he's like the favorite or, um, you know, the owner's being favoritism with this guy mm -hmm. or, or district manager being favorite of that. But in reality, it's, you know, again, like sometimes people, they've invested so much time in that person. They're growing with them. They've been with that individual yes. for a long time. And sometimes people just have that outside perspective and that assumption right away when it's kind of like it's not like that. Oh, yeah. You yeah. got to put in the work. Sometimes you got to, you know start from the bottom to work all the way to the top. You but, know, you I, know, I think it goes back to that, to that new culture where everybody gets a trophy and everyone, you know, I'm, I work here, so I should be at the same level as this person. 
You go to any job and that and that's not gonna happen. Yeah. You go to any job and that's not gonna happen. You yeah. gotta work your way there. So yeah. so at that time it was like, well, who's really, I guess in a sense, in this in this with me and who just kind of stumbled on and, and you know got hired at the corporate level. So uh yeah, I kind of took that and ran with it. But um yeah, going back to being at that at that small gym, I, I kind of just knew and it was funny because the owner had this thing in the bathroom and I'm probably gonna mess it up, but it's like in 25 years, you're going to regret the things that you didn't do mm-hmm. compared to, you know, I'm pretty sure you've heard it before. Yeah. And I would go in there, use the restroom every day, you know. In the restroom, all in, places, In the restroom, right? you know, sitting at the urinal, just kind of like <laughs> reading. I'm telling you, it was literally right over the urinal. And that was, I did that for, a I was there, I was there for like eight years. Wow. I was there for eight years. And it's the same fear that, that when I talk to new trainers, they have the same thing. Yeah. And so I get it. Yeah. I get it. Like, where, how am I going to eat? How mm-hmm. am I going to get these clients? Who's going to come with me? Who's not going to come with me? Mm-hmm. Should, should I, should I not move? You know why I'm making such good money. And I had to say, okay, Jason, you're going to have to take some steps back financially to mm-hmm. be able to move forward. And you hear that all the time, yeah. but until you actually put that into motion, you don't really get it until you actually do it. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was there, you know, I was like, okay, you know, and thank God I have a very, very, very supportive wife. Mm-hmm. And, and really, if it wasn't for her saying you, she would, if I told her I could run for president, she'd be like, you can do it. Yeah. You know, she just believed in everything that, that I can do. And she's like, you can do it. If we have to sacrifice X, Y, Z, we can do that in order to save money to do this. And, um, she, she pushed me hard, dude. She pushed yeah. me hard. And so like, I guess you don't want to fail cause you don't want to disappoint her. Yeah. But at the same time, I knew I had the potential. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I, I knew, I knew I can do it. I'm like, man, I'm doing it everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. I gotta do it for myself now. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's funny because, uh, you know, we're talking about like, you're recognizing the self-worth but then also like going back again, like how you had to work your way up and mm. doing yourself. There's a sense of like self-worth and like humility kind of like going back and yes. forth, right? Like, you know, your self-worth, but you just, you can't just like go into somewhere and just be like, I'm the shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, yeah, yeah. You, you can't do that. I mean, I, and you could be the most experienced person, but if you're starting out at a new job at a new organization or a new place, you can't just walk in, even though you have like the most experience, you can't just walk in there and just be like, I'm the shit. Oh, not right? at all. No. And even for me, um, I had to start off working at a self-made before, I actually opened my self-made and, mm. and I think it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I walked into a self-made and I walked in there like I never trained before. Mm-hmm. I didn't say, oh, I've been, I've been a fitness manager for X amount of years. That's I had good. X amount of clients. Yeah. I walked in there and I was like, I want to learn from you guys. Yeah. And other trainers are just kind of recognize it. And then, I, and then I had people come to me, hey, can you help me with this? Can you help me with this pricing? And it wasn't like I went in there and said, oh, you guys, trust me. I know what I'm talking about. It was like, well, let me hear what, what you do. Okay, yeah, I can yeah, implement yeah. that in mind. And I think more people take to that than, you know, showing the cars or showing this stuff. And I get it. Some people, that's that's what they do. That's thing. And some people are inspired by that. Yeah. I mean, I look at some of that and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But that's not like what I aspire to be or aspire to have, you yeah, know. Yeah. For, so when I, when I took that same mentality, I went into that other self-made and I worked there for a little bit. Okay. I go, okay, this is, I had reached another level of just, I guess, of, um, entrepreneurship where you're where you're really like okay listen to what they have to say take in kind of like everything they're saying and then help them apply it in an actual positive way because a lot of these people again going back to having a lot of followers or not knowing how to do consultations that's like the groundwork yeah you know so a lot of these people they look good but they don't really know how to put that into a a program for somebody so i took that and kind of ran with it and self-made west covina has been doing well ever since yeah i like that because again we're we're reinf- what you're reinforcing is basically despite all your experience you know you still are a student Always. regardless you know what i'm saying and i think everybody er, er, even the most successful people i know they admit they're gonna they're students for life Always. and something yeah. again and then it goes back to like knowing that self-worth and again that humility it's like okay you go maybe maybe you have like decades of uh, personal training experience the manager all this and that but then you know when you go to this next phase in your life or your career you know, you take the step back and it's like, okay, how can I add value here? And how can this work for me and my career and my goals and what I'm trying to exactly. do? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So self-made training facility, West Covina, obviously uh, self-made training facility, the model, everything is just amazing. The culture, everything that's being built. Um, you know, I, I want to get the outside perspective as a, a franchise owner, mm-hmm. you know, what, 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 well, first off, how about this? What kind of drew you to the self-made, uh, you know, franchise itself because there's so many franchises out there yeah, this is yeah, beyond yeah. Us, you know uh-huh. what i'm saying 
Like, what drew you to the actual South May Train facility? So, and to be honest with you, I actually looked at every single one of those franchises. Okay. So, I looked at, I mean... I love it. See, this is yeah, I love yeah, where it's yeah. going. I, 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 I don't <laughs> want to... Anyway, we don't have to point out names. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I looked at every franchise um, that, that had fitness. I mean, um, some of them were in the wheelhouse that I think of just kind of quantity, getting money, getting people in, and then it doesn't matter about retention. Like, just getting them in... Get your get in your, and out, in and out, get, and, try yeah, that scale. And, and that's the business, right? Yeah. But that's what corporate was for me. Yeah. So I kind of like, okay, I don't want to do that. You already knew. I, I, re- I, re- I already knew, right? Yeah. And, and it's successful and yeah. it works, but that's just not me. Yeah. And if I'm going to put money, my own money, into something that I want to build, I wanted to be able to build it and help people grow within it, right? And I knew at some of these franchises, they those people were only going to grow so much before I had to replace them. And it just reminded me of corporate gym too much, mm-hmm. in the sense where I was going to hire you, use you, use you in a sense. You were gonna you were gonna take off and be something greater, and then you're gone. Yeah. Right. So for me, self made. What I loved is that it incorporated every facet of fitness. Mm-hmm. If you're a boxing coach, you can do boxing in there. Yeah. If you're a Muay Thai coach, you can do Muay Thai. If you're grappling, if you're a CrossFit person, I, they call it CrossFit. But really, if you're doing like big compound movements, you can do that. Very versatile. Right? Very very. If you're a bodybuilder, we have weights up to 150. If you're mm-hmm. a booty person, we have machines. We have everything you can <laughs> use. Right. Yeah, so yeah. for me, I I, that, I love that model. And then of course Miguel. You know, Miguel was, when I sat down and talked with him, he really just showed me the direction of the company and and what they wanted to do and and how you can grow within the company, you know, and, or not even the, just the franchise, like how many of these things you can open, how how fast we were moving, how many people took to them. And I was like, this is right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. It it aligns with my ethics, right? Helping people grow. Yeah. And that was a big thing. And Miguel is not trying to be like, okay, we take their money and then we get rid of them. Yeah. That's not what it is. I mean, even if you look at the model that we have, a lot of the stuff is geared towards education for the trainers for free. Yeah. Right? Like we have the self made academy mm. that you go to Temecula, but now, I mean, I'll let Miguel enroll it, but we have something where you go to Temecula, you know, you sit there for a weekend and you talk to Miguel, all these entrepreneurs that have done it, and you leave there with all this knowledge. Yeah. You can't do that at these other franchises. Taylor, tailoring you to success. Exactly. Yeah. And you really see who can take it and run and who can't. And, and self-made, that model was like helping people, the, the ethics align with me, um, helping somebody grow, all that stuff. I was like, I'm for that. I'm for yeah. that. So, so the first interaction I had with Miguel was, was awesome. Yeah. And, and we talked through and he remembered me from Bally's. I remembered him from Bally's. So it was kind of like we kind of just picked up where we left off from like all those years ago. And, yeah. and we opened this thing up and ran. But really the, the big thing was I can see myself growing within Self Made. I can see helping a trainer and helping them grow. You can be a million followers and you could still be a trainer of Self Made. Yeah. Right. You still have all the tools. Let's just say for some reason the new craze is boxing. Boxing is gone. No one wants to do boxing. Me as a franchise owner, I don't lose anything because we can take the boxing ring out, replace it, put more equipment there. Yeah. It's very versatile. So, so we, we don't hold on to a fad, yeah, yeah. right? There's no fad there in self-made. It's literally whatever your specialty is, let's get you in there and let's get your business running. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm for that. I'm 100% for that. Yeah, it seems like almost like, I don't want to say options, but like you said, versatile, very flexible. I guess very flexible, say. uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It, it, dude, that's amazing. And mm-hmm. you know, um, I think what I love again about the self-made, like, like you said, like, just talking about it, it, it seemed to really fit everything that you're about. Because yes. again, you know, we spoke about again, like you would have been a teacher. So you're yeah. able to, you're a teacher, the mentor, and then like the model just fit everything. Like mm. it just aligned with your vision and yeah. everything that you're trying to do. You know, uh, and I, I asked that question about being a franchise owner because I think sometimes also, you know, with all the crap that's out there on social media, owning your own business or, you know, starting something from scratch, you know, I think that which you, you are the true example of like you can be very very successful by getting into a business or a model without being like the actual like owner or founder oh yeah you, you, you know what i'm saying oh, what yeah, i'm trying yeah. to get at with this like yeah i think like because of what's out there people just think like you know it's i don't know if it's like ego you know what i mean i think a lot of it's ego yeah. i think i mean i've gotten a lot of that from from some i call them frenemies because you know when i first when i first signed on with self-made a lot of people were like Oh man, you're you're just gonna be like um, a little Miguel. You're gonna be a little Miguel scapegoat, meaning like, oh, you're gonna go in there and say, oh, fam, and this stuff. But I think people that aren't in self-made, they don't really understand the culture. So I hated self-made when I was at the gym. There was a self-made down the street. I hated him. Mm-hmm. I just hated him because honestly because i wasn't one of them they were like yeah. so tight-knit and you would see on instagram you know all my instagram would be all these trainers from self-made 
Um, I went in to get a tire change one time, right? It was in Rancho. And this uh -huh. guy goes, oh, what do you do for a living? You're a big dude. I said, oh, I'm a personal trainer. He goes, oh, you work at Self Made, right? I was like, no, <laughs> I don't work at Self Made, okay? I'm not one of these, self oh. I even told him, I was like, no, I'm not one of these Self Made guys, dude. He goes, oh, okay, because I have a lot of the Self Made people that come in here. And he actually said, I have a lot of the Self Made family that comes in here. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, how stupid, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was my own insecurities. That yeah. was me being like, I'm the best trainer. Like yeah. not these guys. Like, Ta exactly like, like what, what are they talking about? Like, dude, do a session with me and then do a session with them. Yeah. And uh, a lot of veteran trainers take that. Like if someone can build a business and people pay them, you're an entrepreneur, right? I, I don't care what you're teaching or what you're doing. If you can get people to buy into that, you're an entrepreneur, whether you think your model is better or, or theirs isn't as good, they're getting clients. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, I was just hate. I was just a hater. Yeah. I was a hater. And then, um, when I started doing my research, then I was like, okay, I get it. You know, yeah. I, I get why they say fam and, and, and why we are a family. And it, it's really, I had a trainer I hired and I thought this was so hilarious. She was like, she, I was trying to court her for since like January. Uh -huh. She works at LA Fitness and she would go through all my DMs and put, left me on scene and never respond or yeah. put like a thumbs up or a double tap. And I'm like, okay, you know. So she finally reached out to me and she goes, man, you guys are like the Kardashians. <laughs> yeah right and i was I like it. i, I was it. like how are you like the kardashian yeah, and she yeah, was yeah. like i was laughing and she was because if you're a kardashian you love it you love being a kardashian because you know everybody recognizes you and and you're in this family but if you're not a kardashian you're on the outside looking in everybody you hate them wow and yeah. she was like yeah i work at ali fitness everybody hates you guys i mean dude it's it's crazy to see right so there hasn't been a gym like this in the la county yet yeah like a self-made so when i opened in self-made um for me, I don't do the generic, hey, I'm Jason, I'm opening a gym. I try to really just leave valuable, like, hey, that's a good exercise. Or, hey, you know, you're a trainer in the area, you know, that's awesome. You know, where's your gym at? You know, I want to go. I took a look at almost every gym there. Yeah. The gym owners probably now don't like me, but I've been to every single one of their gyms and I kind of said, okay, I don't want this, I like this. But all those gyms are trying to duplicate our culture. It's the funniest thing. One yeah. gym even got graffiti across the wall. Oh, never had yeah, it yeah. they walked in there i was like oh my god you guys got their graffiti on the wall one gym they call themselves uh now it's like on their stories like oh yeah we're one big family and it's like i have trainers from those gyms and they're like dude they never did this and they kind of see what we're doing and what we're building and that's how i know we're going in the right direction absolutely right when people are duplicating what we're doing i'm like okay well that and just the haters in general right right, right. hater yeah, yeah, yeah. but i mean you're gonna have haters if you're a mcdonald's worker yeah if yeah, you yeah. if you're a millionaire you're always gonna have haters because and the real reason people hate is because they wish they can be doing what you're doing Absolutely. right it's, yes. it's how many of us i mean myself included were stuck in that rut of like i love training and then i started slowly losing passion for it because it was just so redundant and i i really feel like my my passion all along has always been to help people and it sounds weird you know but i get so much joy out of seeing someone be successful yeah. and you know if someone's like the gym in um we have one in arizona right that just mm -hmm. opened up or actually they've been open longer than me and they're killing it yeah and for me i'm always like man how, what are you doing like yeah. how are you doing that i'm always dming them because yeah. for me it's like let's take what they're doing and apply it to mine so for me i'm i'm open-minded to everybody's suggestions on what they do but i think going back to that a lot of people want to open jason's gym from scratch because it's an ego thing like i built this from scratch yeah and um I get that. And if you can do it, you know, do it. And yeah. a lot of people can do it and they have been successful. But it's like, a, like, there's nothing wrong with there's it. There's nothing wrong yeah, with it. There's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with either or, but I feel like people kind of, people kind of downplay opening a franchise because they're like, oh, you just follow this model. But really, when you open one, it's your own. Yeah. Like even Miguel tells you, like, you do whatever you want with it within, within, within the parameters, but he really doesn't give you a lot of parameters other than it's red and black, you build your culture, go. Yeah. So I think a lot of people get in there and they're like, oh, why isn't this self-made like the, like the other one? And I go, well, because it's run differently. Yeah. All of them are run differently. So, I mean, in the sense, it is Jason's gym, it's just with the self-made, but I'm telling you the self-made backing, like I tell some of the other trainers, um, some of my trainers in the area, they were getting like free Chipotle just because they were self-made trainers. They were getting free supplements from other supplement stores just because they were self-made. Mm -hmm. It's almost like when, uh, and we're not Nike, so don't, don't, <laughs> die, right? I'm going to say something and yeah, yeah, yeah. people give me a hard time, but it's like when you, when you align yourself with Nike and now you're like, oh, I'm a Nike athlete. It's like, oh wow. Okay. So you're, you're it's like it's, elite of the it's elite. elite of the elite, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. there's a lot of great trainers out there. So, so I'm just kind of saying like as a client's perspective, yeah, clients flock to the self-made because they re, we have an established culture. We have everything established for them. So they're more inclined to go to a self-made where you actually know the trainer, you see their Instagram, you get kind of a feel where they are, then going mm -hmm. to LA fitness. And it's like, next, 
Who, yeah. Who's available? Yeah. Let's plug you in. Yeah. You know, so. No, I definitely agree because, I mean, as myself, being like I went to corporate gyms mm -hmm. and I went to other, you know, training facilities kind of like that was very right. similar. Mm -hmm. And look at me. Like, I, I see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, 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 it drew me as a client or like, you know, a uh, customer to seeing what you guys are all about. Right. And now I'm freaking like, as a You're Andrew Cruz, as Andrew Cruz told me, it's a dick thing. Like, you know, <laughs> Andrew, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, and yeah. like, but you know what? I think that there's something very important that I want to highlight here, you know, from, again, being a franchise owner. And, you know, we spoke about ego and like, you know, that outside perspective and all the haters, the insecurities, right? Right, right. But I mean, like for you, this is what I love, man, because, you know, you, 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 you stumbled upon this, you know, this model, you met McGill, and then... It, you shifted your perspective because, again, you admitted that you were insecure. But then instead, you know, you shifted your perspective and now it's kind of like, okay, I know what my values are. I know what I'm trying to do. But how? But now it's like I could add value to to this franchise here. Yes. And, again, like it's just the whole ego thing. Like this mm -hmm. is Jason's gym. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, And it's just crazy sometimes like from the haters' perspective or from outside how – you know, it's just that outside look, but really, if you just really look into it and kind of just open your mind a little bit, you could see like the possibilities and the opportunities out there with anything, not even just self-made, you know? It's oh yeah. Any, I mean, anything you open, uh, I told someone it's like the same as if, um, you opened a, um, a burger shop next to a McDonald's, right? right. More people are inclined to go to the McDonald's because the name's already established. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't take away from any small gyms because in the end of the day, we're all entrepreneurs. You know what I mean? I still have to go out there and hustle as much as everybody else does. But um, when you attach yourself to something that's already proven, yeah. it just adds that value without even you interacting. And then when you interact with them, they're like, oh, my God, I love this, I love this facility. Mm -hmm. I love the people here. And it builds and it builds. And it's a lot of momentum that we've had and we just ran with it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I've looked at options to open other gyms. And even the gym that I was at, um, I kind of saw how she ran with it. And she was very successful for years running it. But the same thing is she, she never grew. There was never any room for growth because she was known – in Rancho and there was never any much more you can do than that. You know what I mean? And I see the possibility I can open a gym in Hollywood and no one has to know who I am, but they know what the self-made brand is. So yeah. it would attract trainers to me. And once they come in and they, they meet me, they interact with me, they kind of see what I'm about. Then they're more like, Oh, this is Jason's gym. Yeah. Then it's self-made. So yeah, like yeah. if you, if you walk into my gym now, my trainers, I quartered most of them, you know, I literally handpicked. I always tell them if you got a DM from me, it wasn't on accident. Yeah, I saw yeah. something in you that I really liked and I yeah. really thought we can grow together. Just just like my guest on this podcast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know it wasn't an accident, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, no, it's true though, right? Yeah. But you didn't say like, hey, I have this podcast, I want to do it. Or hey, I'm going to go to your gym, I want X, Y, Z. I get people that come in like, oh, I know Miguel. I'm like, yeah, everyone knows Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, they're yeah. like, yeah, Miguel said I can do Like, don't don't approach it in that way. You approach it as like you're, you're generally trying to find about about me like right when we first had our boxing thing we just talked for a while yeah, and, that, yeah. and that's how our, that's how our friendship grew and i did the same thing with trainers because for me this is my gym yeah. right i invested a lot of time and a lot of money in here absolutely i want to work with people that i like yeah right so when well, I energy sit right energy. yes yeah, yeah. so when i sit down and i i guess you call it interview people when i sit down and talk to them if i don't like you chances are i don't want you to partner i don't want to partner with you mm -hmm. and i've turned down a lot of people from training at South Bay West Covina. Yeah. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, if I wanted to open the door and say, everybody's welcome, I would have like 65 trainers in there. Mm -hmm. Easy. Because people want to be a part of it. But then you would lose sight of that whole family feel and, and what we're trying to really achieve, right? I'm not you might trying be taking to, away from the culture a little bit, right? 100%. Piece by piece and by I piece. And I tell people, yeah. if I was in this to be rich, trust me, I would have 80 trainers in here yeah. scrambling over each other. But that's not the goal. The goal is longevity. Yeah. And the reputation of the gym and, and keeping that intact because you know when a gym has a good reputation, then I could feel like I can move on somewhere else and open another self made, you know, or another franchise or whatever it may be. But I really feel people lose sight of building those relationships and really yes, really the, the inner person, you know, relationships. They just kinda like, Oh, I know them from IG and you know, I have abs, so you don't want to train with me? And you're like, No, dude. <laughs> yeah, you have yeah, no yeah. substance, you yeah. know what I mean? You don't yeah. know what you're doing. There's so more there's more to a person than just your followers and just like this picture. You know what I'm saying? Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you don't have to go in very, very detailed because I don't want to take away from the actual interviews that happen. Mm -hmm. But I'm just curious to know what are like maybe a few things that you definitely look for, or if not, maybe look for for your facility. Mm -hmm. Definitely something that you know other you know other gyms look for in a personal trainer. You know what? It's 
it's very much so like dating. Like when we first, and so at the time we had no, everyone says, I thought you guys have been open for years, right? Like you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's because I've been, I've been at it before we even had a building. We didn't even have a building. We had nothing signed. I just had the franchise tag signed, yeah. but I was already doing interviews, right? Yeah. I was at Starbucks. So it was like an intimate setting. Like, you know, I haven't dated in God, 14 years. I've been married. Uh-huh. But I imagine when you go on a date, it's like at a Starbucks or somewhere in public yeah. place. So you would sit there and you would talk to them. Yeah, yeah. And I would just say, just tell me about your business. Yeah. And what I look for is someone that has a business model, even if they don't, that is trying to expand their brand. Right? Nice, trying yeah. to expand their business. Yeah. So They have a sense of vision. They least. have a sense of vision, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like They're like, because nah, um, uh, even one guy said, you're perfectly suited to stay at LA Fitness. Because he's like, oh, my clients are good where I'm at. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just going to do this school thing and then be gone. I'm like, then you're perfectly suited to stay at LA Fitness because you're making the money you want to make. Yeah. You just want to be in a cooler environment, but I'm not hiring people to be in a cooler environment. I'm hiring people that we could all grow uh, together. Yeah. So, for you know, for, for me, it, it's finding people that have a passion for this, finding people that see a potential in their own self mm-hmm. that want to grow. So I, I, I even hired this girl... And clearly people who want to really make an impact. And exactly. Want to serve people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I always say like, you don't have to be like, oh, I want to be the best trainer because a lot, some of these trainers I hired, I just, I just had a feeling that they, that they were going to be successful. And I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, yeah. I've always had that. That's that intuition. Yeah. I always had the intuition. Thing. Like, you know, there was even one guy, I hired man and, and he just came with like, not a bad attitude, but he looked really tough, really rough. Yeah. And I was like, I like you for some reason. I cannot. And now he's blown up. Man. Now he's blown up, right? But even some of these people are like, oh, I was a front desk and I train people kind of on the side, but they just had that that entrepreneur bone in them. Yeah. You know, and you're like, you could feel it, you can see it. So for me, I guess what I look for is working well with others, obviously. Yeah. Because we're, uh, we're a 7,000 square foot facility. We house 35 plus trainers and everybody has to have spatial awareness of what we're doing. And, you know, everyone has to be able to work within the confines of the gym. Definitely. So one guy interviews like, yeah, I do my own thing. And I was like, oh. <laughs> right away, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, and this isn't going to work. Yeah, yeah, He's like, I don't need your apps. I don't need this stuff. I just want to train my clients there. You know, I'm not looking to do meetings and stuff like that. So, no, that's fine. You don't have to go to meetings. It's not mandatory. They're just suggestions. He goes, yeah, yeah, you know, you probably will never even see me. We will probably won't even talk. Wow. And he had 25, 30 clients ready to go. But I was like, that energy, I could feel from the meeting, it would have just ruined it. It yeah, would have yeah. ruined it. It would have ruined what I was trying to build. So, I guess what I look for is someone. But that just speaks on what he said about all. Oh, I won't be at any of the meetings. That's oh yeah, like, right off the bat. Yeah. Don't, don't you want you want to have people who want to contribute? You know, one hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and you have some people too. I mean, for the most part, all my trainers are are very open to like when we have meetings. I try to bring something of value of it. I don't just say I have a meeting because I want to talk. It's usually something yeah. right. It's so important that's happening, or maybe something I can help you with grow, or yeah. something you can help me with, and. um so far, so good. <laughs> Dude, if you wanted to talk to them, you would have just started your own podcast. Right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, in the works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one thing I wanted to ask too is um, if there's anything that personal trainers, now that we're on the topic, obviously, if there's anything that personal trainers can do right now to become successful, what do you think they, like maybe two things? I mean, besides having the education mm-hmm. to do it, I yeah. would say um, be very active on social media. Okay. And, and social media presence. Social media presence. And I'm not talking about you have to have professional photography. Um, what I've noticed from just having this self meeting scene trainers grow is that they're kind of an open book on their stories, mm-hmm. right? Like their struggles they've had, looking for clients, training their clients. People want to see that. If you go to our self made West Covina page, we are never at a loss for stories. We have stories upon stories upon yeah. stories because you want to get a feel for that person. Yeah. And I think a lot of trainers, they, they uh, live off the fact that they either look good or that they think they know what they're doing. Yeah. And as a consumer, I'm not going to probably DM you for pricing unless I see you on a daily training. Yeah. Let's just say you have no clients. Go out there and train family and friends. Yeah. Right? Get some people, get some bodies in front of you. Get some people in front of you. Um, it's just if you're a brand new trainer. Yeah. Right? Just get people in front of you and, and make a presence known. If you do a poll and no one responds, people are still watching. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. Like, oh, I got no interaction. It doesn't matter. Are people watching your stories? Yes. It's going to grow. Yeah. Just keep on growing with Put it. Put yourself out there, right? Because there's a reason you got into fitness. I'm right. sure like many of your trainers have their own fitness, like, you know, uh, turnaround. Like, for instance, if I became a personal trainer, I would be sharing automatically. Like, you know what? I used to be 270 pounds. Mm-hmm. I got into, you know, I got into the health care a little bit and I wanted to impact. I lost all this weight. Now I want to help people. Right. Right. Put yourself out there. Right. Basically right. what you're saying, right? Definitely put yourself out there. And uh, and what else do you think besides um, social media presence? Nowadays, collab with as many trainers as you can. Okay. 
collab. I mean, grant, uh, take away the education part because obviously you have to have the education. You should be certified. Um, collab with as many people as you can and just make connections. If you have to drive to LA to commute or, or to collab with a trainer out there, do it. Mm-hmm. You know, just get yourself out there. And I think a lot of people are looking for the best opportunity. There is no best opportunity. You got to create it, yeah. right? Uh, like all these people, yeah, all these people, that, all, yeah. all these people are wearing like uh, Gymshark and they're tagging Gymshark, thinking Gymshark's gonna be like, you know what? I'm going to put this person on the page. No, you know how you get sponsored by a Gymshark? You buy their stuff first. You take a crap load of picture with it and you're constant with it. Yeah. So don't go out there and wait for someone to reach out to you. Reach out to a friend that works out and just, just do collab videos. I mean, one of my guys that I hired, I just hired and he started this thing where he does collab videos with people. Now he has a list of people that want to collab with them because he creates such great content for them. Nice. It gives them something, you know? So, yeah. so if you're going to do go there, give them something, give yeah. them, give them a video that you shot. So, you take, so take initiative, but also like when you're collabing, see how you can add value to those other people. You exactly. Kind of collab with exactly. And, vice yeah. versa, right? mm-hmm. and then how about two, maybe like two things that personal trainers need to stop doing? Like for sure. It's like, Hey dude, like be careful. Uh, need to stop doing. Huh? Besides the obvious, which is maybe from uh, your, even just from your experience, I don't, and maybe just from you know the personal trainers you work with, you know, I would say um, for sure, for sure, um, do not be on your phone when you're training clients. That's... I mean, that's just the. I always tell the trainers that um, when you work, even if you're working out like at a corporate gym, or if you're a corporate trainer right now, um, I used to tell them everybody's watching you. Because yes. you're, you're like, quote, unquote, a celebrity in that gym because you're wearing a personal training shirt. So I tell the trainers, as soon as you step foot in the gym, you're on. Meaning, like, even if you're just working out, other clients are watching you. Yes. And so the big thing is, if you're a trainer that goes in there and they see you picking up weights or saying hi to everybody, you're very attentive to your clients, it's only a matter of time before people recognize that. Mm-hmm. And that's how you establish yourself as having, like, being a senior trainer, a veteran trainer. Uh, s- s- stop being on your phone yes <laughs> like that like, yeah you rec- like, that trainer is involved yes they're not distracted they're invested in the client you yes, know what i mean 100 no, percent. completely agree being again that i used to uh you know have a trainer and you know yeah I, I and i see it too you know what i mean oh yeah i see it at other uh gyms and stuff and um anything else i would say this is a personal preference that okay I hate. okay um stop killing your clients yeah stop uh, yeah I, I never understood uh, the the killing of the clients right you come to me with a goal my goal is to kill you you're never going to come back yeah never going to right you, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have to you blew out my leg yeah, brother yeah, you have <laughs> you know? to and then they put it on ig oh look at my guy's throwing up like as a consumer i'm not like oh i gotta train with this guy because he made this guy throw up yeah yeah I need, I need to see the progression right yes, i need to see yes. the progression like oh my god oh this is my client joe joe can't squat two months later oh look at joe squatting his own body weight two weeks later oh joe squatting with the bar you know look at look at his hip hinge Oh, I want to train with that person because that person has progressed yeah. right now. Like, oh, look at Jane. She's throwing up in the bathroom again. Oh, she fainted. I think there's a misconception of trainers. They think I got to show someone that I can kill them yeah. in order to get them as a client. But really clients sign up because they want to know that you understand everything about them. So when I do a consultation, it's like, how much sleep do you get? What's your daily schedule? What time do you eat? Interesting. Who supports you? Yeah. Right. What if you get home and your, your husband's like, oh, let's go eat in and out. Like you have to find ways to combat that. Mm. So the program that I give to clients includes all that. Right. Mm. Like this is what, how we're going to work around this. You're going to try to get this many steps in. Not OK. Sign this waiver. Let's go. Yeah. The first consultation would even work out. Yeah. It's just a conversation. Yeah. Let's yeah. find out where your weaknesses are and let's make those your strengths and let's see how we can progress you from there. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of trainers have to get out of the, the mindset of like, I'm gonna kill this person to show value and actually sit down and show value. Yeah. Show them like, oh, you missed these meals, well we can supplement it with this. We can do this. Yeah. We could start you off with just doing thirty minutes and then we'll progress you to here. These are your goals. And I think people just say, You're signing up from A and then Going we're just gonna go. Z. <laughs> yeah. So it's so I always tell people within the first month we should be here. Yeah. Within two months, we should be here. Yeah. Within four months, we should be here. And this is this is our goals that we're, we're trying to get to, whether it's like uh, running a mile or how many steps, depending on the person, yeah. of course, and, and where they're at. But then people are like, oh, this is like a real professional. Yeah. Right? Not like some guy that made me throw up and handed me a water and said, okay, my price is 900 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. Sign up. There has to be like a sense of enjoyment too. Like, well, yeah, it, be challenged, right? And like maybe, you know, go through the progression and all that stuff. But at the same time, like, enjoy it too it's a hundred percent yeah right yeah because i mean like you box i've boxed for about two years and and the, and the girl i go to in um santa monica box and burn shout out to them um she can kill me at any time she wanted to what she does is she shows me the fundamentals and then she kills me yeah and then she tells me the reason why she killed me yeah right it's not like okay we're just gonna do Education. a thousand yeah, yeah yeah 
right? So if I have a client and they're having a hard day, I tell them, this is why we're going to do this. This is the endurance we should be building by two weeks. We should be able to do this with X amount of weight. Mm -hmm. So there's an understanding. Don't just go, okay, I made you run five miles just because. Yeah. I made you run five miles because of X, Y, Z, right? And I think when people have know that you have a game plan, then they're more inclined to be like, okay, this is going to suck today, but I know it's because my trainer wants me to be here, mm -hmm. right? Same thing with trainers. Like, okay, it's going to be hard when I first get into self-made, you know, depending on where they're at. But I know Jason said by this time I should have this. So like I usually tell even trainers uh, uh, not to get too far off subject, but like if you're trying to get two clients, you should have 10 people in a day you're talking to. So if mm -hmm. you're trying to pick up 10 clients, you better be seeing 50 to 60 bodies. Yeah. Right. So it, it's more, you got to touch a lot of people. Yeah. Right. Don't just think, oh, this girl says she's going to sign up. So I'm going to shut it down. Yeah. No, you should have X amount of stories. You should have X amount of posts. You should have X amount of, um, you know, client, client, um, transformations and stuff yeah. like that. And that's kind of like the maturation of becoming a veteran trainer is you, people want to see what you do every day. Yeah. Right. They want to see that you have a plan. Yeah. What's your plan? Yeah. That's yeah. what I would ask about as a client. If you're a client out there, this camera, ask your trainer what their plan is, <laughs> right? Really, really, honestly, if you're going to sign up with the trainer, yeah. say, okay, what's my plan for three months? Yeah. And if they can't map out your plan for three months, chances are they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like I, I kind of see it too, like in my nursing career, like, oh, yeah. you know, when someone didn't know the plan, it's kind of like, hello, you're in charge of my health. And this oh, is kind of yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah. Client, you know, you, mm -hmm. you're the personal trainer, like you're in charge. It's kind of like you're in charge of my health. Like, you know what I mean? And if you're kind of like lost or don't know, yeah. red flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I was like, I was like, uh, uh, you never go into the dentist. He's like, all right, I'm going to pull three, these three teeth. Why? You did no x-rays. You did nothing. I just sat in the chair. That's what it kind of, I feel like a client feels like when they walk into a gym, like, okay, join the boot camp, go. Yeah. Like, you don't know anything about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I said, name one profession, professional that you've gone into and you sat down there, the first interaction and they're already doing like a surgery or pulling teeth from you or they're doing something. No, yeah. there's a whole process to it. Yeah, history, yeah, all this stuff, what your goals are. You right? Know, I mean, I mean, maybe I'm older and that's just the way I think, but I'm like, man, if I go to the doctor, he's like, all right, we need open heart surgery. Dude, I had a hangnail. I came in for that, you know? So like some, some people don't want, they just want to feel better. They just want to be able to, you know, play with their kids. They're not trying to have abs. They're not trying to, to yeah. get there. And even then, that's, Indiv that's indiv a, individualistic goals. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And same thing with trainers. Not every trainer is trying to be the next uh, uh page hathaway you know or or the next you know <laughs> she's a big one that comes to my mind um some people just really want to help people and then make a living out of it like for me I, I would say i don't put a lot of my own personal pictures or tag myself on my own instagram um as far as the the self-made gym one yeah i don't want to be a miguel i don't want to be everybody knows my name i mean have you seen that guy try to just walk anywhere it's mm -hmm. ridiculous like he comes to the gym and everyone's trying to take a picture i'd rather be the guy <laughs> That people are like, oh, how do you know the owner? Oh, I know him from X. Not because I'm plastered all over in IG. For me, I'd rather be the low key guy helping people build their careers, and you know, people know me because they've interacted with me, not because they've seen me on Instagram. And you know, it's just a weird, it's a weird world that I don't want to so much be that much a part of. Yeah, yeah. As I'd rather just be the guy on on the down low, kind yeah. of helping people. Yeah, out. Everyone mm -hmm. has their own preference. And again, oh you, yeah, yeah. You know, you have your own goal and your own visions mm -hmm. and stuff like that. For, for yourself and your career mm -hmm. speaking of you know your career what's what what is your ultimate goal i would say um right now we're in our third third uh, may june july august yeah so we're about we're about our third fourth month in the business so just making sure we hammer out the details and um man it's, it's been a roller coaster of a ride already I mean, yeah. from, from, I mean, it looks I, like it, dude. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if you, uh, um, from opening late, having stuff dealing with the city and, and that's what I was telling people is like, even if it's a franchise, it's still a business. So there's still ups and downs. And yeah. if you go into it thinking, I kind of went in there naively thinking, Oh, I already found my spot. We're going to be open by this time. There's been so many delays yeah. and whether it's, it's something that's maybe on our end or maybe that's just unavoidable, there's delays. And it's like, how do you, how do you really, you know, overcome those? And like, for us, we were supposed to be open in May. Like we had the equipment in there, we had everything in there, but we didn't have the city approval yet. Mm -hmm. So I had trainers that had quit their jobs, like wow. literally quit their jobs. Like Jason, what are we going to do? And so, you know, I had to take a step back and be like, okay, let's see what we can do. Some trainers were training in the park. Some trainers were training, you know, outside the gym. We, we just had to make it work. We had tarp up on the windows, man. We were, we were training people in there. So no one can see. We were picking nails up off the floor in the beginning. It was still a construction site. Right in a sense, but the people that have been with me for a long time, we always call it the uh, the tarp era, because like <laughs> we had tar yeah, no rules. Like you'll see it, like oh, who's been with me since we had tarp on the, on the windows, and they'll raise their hand. They remember like me going in there, like the toilets were backed up because that place hadn't been used for like eight years. Mm. So I was there at Walmart getting a plunger, cleaning people's crap out of the toilet. We had no cleaner, so it was me 
on my hands and knees cleaning those toilets. Like that's the glamorous part or that's the part that people don't see that they think, yeah. oh man. It's not told. Yeah. yeah, it's not told. So when people go, oh, I want to open a self-made, it looks so easy. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's still a business. Like you're still going to have these hiccups. So now you could, you could definitely, uh, you're not discouraging that you could do it, but just know there's just, definitely more mm, behind the scenes. Oh, there's a lot so of much more. Work. And, and even now there's always like small things that, that you always constantly have to deal with. And it's like, Every day is is a is a new journey. It's a, it's like a new venture. Like what's what's on the plate today? Yeah. You know, people. What's your schedule like? I'm like, I have no idea. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Let's see. I could get a call. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't checked my flight. Probably get a call right now about something. But I think um, understanding that there's always going to be hurdles. Whether you're a trainer trying to progress to be independent, not even self made. You're just trying to be an independent trainer. Whether you're a, a new trainer trying to get into a corporate gym, I I do recommend that if that's what if that's what you want to do. There's going to be ups and downs, right? No matter what you do, but if you're consistent with it and you really believe it and you have fun doing it, it's it, it's going to work out in your favor, mm -hmm. right? But what I like about you and this uh, and me, you know, I had to shift my mindset, you know, uh, before, but really like in this in despite of all these hurdles, these speed bumps, you know, they're def they they were definitely learning lessons for you, oh, and yeah. it only just helped you grow into the person that you've uh, become and who you're becoming, man. You know, appreciate that, yeah. yeah. So last question before we run out of time, um, you know, really, I see you, you know, obviously as a very, very good person, you know, a lot of humility, definitely a lot of experience. If there's anything that comes to my mind when I think of your name and just you, I just think of a great leader. Appreciate that. In, in your eyes, man, uh, what do you think makes a successful leader? Actually caring about the people that you're going to work with. I, I mean, it, it's, it yes. sounds, it sounds very cliche, but... Um, I genuinely care about every single one of their business. And when I tell them, when, when we partner together, I tell them my business is you, yeah. right? So like if you're a trainer with clients, your business is your clients. They kind of incense are my clients. So not only do you have the backing of self-made, but you have an owner that cares genuinely about your business. Because if I can get X amount of trainers that are just killing it business-wise, I don't have to get more trainers. Yeah. So in a sense, when you come into this, I'm trying to see what I can do to help you, how I can help you grow. Because if you grow... Then I grow. I'm always the last one to eat. That's what I tell people. I'm the last one. Don't worry about me. I'm going to eat, but I'm only going to eat if you do well. So yeah. I think a lot of people see that. They, and really, if you're a leader, you have to show by example. Yeah. I'm in there at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. I'm in there cleaning toilets. I'm in there training clients. I'm in there picking up weights. I'm not like conferencing, calling people in like, hey, do this, do this. If I tell you to do something, it's because I've done it or I'm doing it. Yeah. And any mentor I've ever had, um, that's one thing that always stuck in my head. It's like, oh, yeah, you preach this, but do you do it? Yeah. Right. And so for me, I, I tend to follow people more that actually are doers and they get up and they do it because they have the experience. Yeah. You know, so if you're if you're and I don't even want to be anyone's mentor. I don't like that. Uh, I think <laughs> just because, you know, I have it's so like, much. Hold up. Hold no, up. No, I, just, I just feel I just feel like I have so much more to learn. And I, and I think that's oh, it's always going to be the case. I, I'm pretty sure Miguel probably still feel like he has a lot more to learn. But for me, I just I like I tell someone I'm not going to be your mentor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the, the information knowledge that I have. Yeah. And you run with it, right? Yeah. And I, 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 a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, Jason, thank you. You're my mentor. And, and I trust me. I truly appreciate that. And, and I, I thrive off of that. It makes me want to be a better person for them. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And so for me, like, uh, I, I don't try to be too much of like a, a guru. Like, oh, guys, this is what I did. It's literally the first thing you have to do is just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Align yourself with people that are doing it. Yeah. And that's why self-mades do so well. You have at any time, any self-made you walk into, there's probably 30, 30 entrepreneurs that have been doing it for years. Yeah. Why would you not go in there and pick every single one of their brains? Like where else can you do that, right? Like you guys have a mastermind program. You guys go there, you talk to other entrepreneurs, you find out what they're doing. You came to the gym. I got a chance to talk to a lot of the entrepreneur friends that you have, learn mm -hmm. what they're doing. Like self-made in itself, you go in there and you should learn from every single one of those trainers. Yeah. Like how they're running their business. And I guarantee you'll learn. So if you're one of those people that want to be like, oh, I'm independent, I don't need anyone's help that's probably your biggest issue is because you always need help. Yeah. I don't care if you have 500 clients, you still need help. You yeah. still need, there's still room for growth. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's, that's a big thing on being a leader is like, I'm never satisfied with where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I want to be there better. So I, I want to be better so that I can help these guys be better. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I feel like we align so much and I attract towards you because at the same time with me, with my podcast, I'm not here to say every time we have these conversations or, you know, the, the stuff that we, uh, I guess, so-called preaching or we're discussing, mm -hmm. it's not necessary to say, hey, this is the only way to do it. Oh, yeah. But take it and see how you could apply it and 
you know, tailor it towards you and what you're trying to do. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, man, dude, I appreciate you, man, coming on the parables, brother. Thank that, you, This was bro. awesome, man. It was an incredible episode, man. Do me a favor before we shut off. Uh, let everybody know where they could find you. Um, he's already getting blown up by all these influencers, but uh, I mean, maybe he'll no, get back to you. I promise. No, no. <laughs> uh, you can find me at uh, JTAM Fit on Instagram, and then you can find the gym at Self Made Training Facility West Covina. Um, I have it linked on my bio, but um, yeah, I'm always open to anybody that is a aspiring trainer or that as a trainer now in the area and you're looking just to expand your own brand i mean it doesn't hurt to have a conversation yep. it doesn't hurt to sit down and talk to see if it works for you for some people self-made doesn't work for you right now it may work for you later but it's good for you to know kind of what you have to do to be a successful entrepreneur mm -hmm. and i'm kind of like that's what my day is i go into the gym and i either talk to trainers or i talk to aspiring trainers and kind of see if they align with us and if i can help them build a brand some sometimes it just doesn't work yeah, and it's fine, but you won't know unless you actually come in there and chop it up with me. Mm. Talk it out. Let's see. See, I like that. See, this is why this is this is why you're my guy, man. Because <laughs> you know, I I associate myself with people. You know, like there's not so much about like, hey, you need to come and be only with me, right? You know what I mean? Like maybe it might not work for you, yeah. But let me see how I could be of value, or maybe I might know somebody that it may work That's for you. That's what it's all about. Even if they don't, doesn't apply to you or mm -hmm. benefit you. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's just about mm -hmm. serving people, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And I, and I absolutely love that, man. Serve that the people, you, man. Yeah. So, but Jason. You know, only legends sign my canvas. Ooh. So you got to sign the canvas, brother. And I appreciate you. Do me a favor, guys. If you guys are watching or listening, if you find value out of this episode, please tag us and let us know what you think. You know, I don't run ads. Uh, you know, really, this again, the parables is about being a portal or a beacon for positive influence and positive energy. So, again, if you guys find value in this episode, let us know what you think. Please tag us. And again, I'm going to have my boy sign the infamous canvas, baby. Let's get it. Let's go. Parables Podcast with Jason Tam. Thank you, guys. We are out of here.